name is Bukola of Mombafato, but I'm your welcome to my channel, the Purposeful Woman channel. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. It's like, you know, I took a break of about one month and um, it's actually because uh, I had acne breakout and it was so severe, you know, they call it a mask mask acne right yeah so i was really really breaking out and it's not gone yet old 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 but at least it's manageable then um after the covid uh, whatsoever uh, i had to reason back to work so let's go to the business of today hmm. have you ever wondered some people will tell you like life or where i can ever never never give my business or make a believer my business associates and then they also point fingers to some people and say do you know that woman is a christian if you see the things she does the things she do and blah 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 and so on and so forth and then you begin to wonder in your heart like what is all this that there are some people that are just out there what are they doing they are messing up and then it feels like what do you mean so it means that every believer or everyone is the same well you know first oppression they say lasts long and um, people actually don't know that their attitude the way they conduct themselves in in, in, in uh, outside the way they behave the way they talk some people talk unruly and um, this speaks volume some so you know have you ever seen a situation whereby you are in a gathering for the first time you met someone and you did not even notice the person until the person started talking and you'll be like, well, oh, who's this one? What's this one saying? You know, <laughs> those kind of things. So, and I've always told people that your understanding of the word of God, your scripture, we actually make you function well in life. Because the Bible has, you know, precepts, principles that guide our conduct, that guide our behavior outside, that guides the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we, we, we are expected to, to behave and to do things. So this morning, I'm just going to be you know, breathing on a little about the season. I'm going to share two scriptures with you. I have my Bible here. <laughs> so I'm going to share first. I'm going to share with us. Um, which one should I start with first of all? I think. Okay, let me start with First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3. It says, Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of their wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Now listen, we have two things that are being mentioned there. We have one that you should, uh, women are supposed to be in subjection, then two, that's your attitude your character your fear and your test attitude test means um your pureness the way you carry yourself you may be able to win over that man okay this is not just applicable to married people that man that is not ungodly or does not have the fear of god now listen this is my emphasis my emphasis is from verse 3. It says, Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the air and the wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the eating man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of the meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, great price. How do you define beauty as a man? How do you define beauty as a woman? <laughs> you know, this is uh, one of my pastor, Pastor Femi Ajayi says that we have the container and the content. Most, more than often, people always focus on the outward look. But the Bible tells us here in 1 Peter 3 verse 3, it says, oh, verse 4, it says, 
your inward man, which is the contents, is a great price before the Lord. Some people can be beautiful outside, they can be nice, but they can be cute and all. But if you meet the real person that they have, you'll be like, is this the devil's cousin or what? You know what I'm saying? So, as women, as ladies, our beauty actually lies in the person that we are, not your outward appearance. You know, I want to look beautiful today. I want to look beautiful today. And then you look like beautiful, of course, like a queen. But deep down, nobody can come near you because you are what you are. You are, you are, you are, you are not just approachable. Have you ever come across men whose wife don't commensurate with their level of beauty or appearance? Ask those men. They will tell you that this woman, she may not be beautiful, but yet she gives me peace. You know what I'm saying? So our beauty does not lie in our outward appearance. Okay? So, and we wonder about our mothers, like our grandparents, like, how do they even, you know, endure 50 years marriage, 80 years marriage, and on and on and on like that? I have the answer for you. The Bible says in that same First Peter chapter 3, verse 3, is it? For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being a subjection unto their own as well. So, how do you adorn yourself as a woman? You adorn yourself by your inner beauty. Let's stop there. Now, let me take us to first speak for um, I'm sorry, Titus, 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 Titus chapter 2. Now, Apostle Paul was speaking to Titus. It was actually referring to, it was talking about the church and people, the way people were behaving. Some were talking unruly, some were already blaspheming the scriptures. You know, when I read through this place, something caught my heart so much. I will get there. But before I get there, let us look at it. Now, this is like a code of conduct for you as a man, as a woman, or as a youth. It's like a code of conduct for you in the way you should walk, in the way you should behave outside. So I'm going to read. You see, but speak thou these things which become sound doctrine. These things, speak them which become sound doctrine. The first is that one, that the aged men be sober, brave, temperance, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. Sound in faith, in charity, and in patience. You know, <laughs> in my own community where I came from, they will tell you that suru niafinshe or ko or mo bewe. That means it is only patience is the only virtue that you need as the man to be able to become a husband to a woman or a lady. So even the Bible confirms that that you need patience and you need to be temperament and uh, uh, sorry temperate you don't have to be <laughs> some men they are the lion of the tribe of judah of their family when the family hears their voice like that is back they begin to you know run enter skeleton like come on what's wrong with you you don't share variable you know <laughs> so let's go to the women for the women which is my emphasis we have the way aged women should conduct themselves is likewise the aged women that they be in behavior as becoming holiness. Let your behavior be comment of holiness. Let people see you and say, No, this woman is holy. The aged woman. Are you an elder out there and all you do is to tell the youth behind you, oh, you've not heard of this latest scream, you've not heard of this latest crawl, you've not heard of this, and you have to do, you know, you have to have find solution to the way your husband is doing this and blah, 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 blah. Giving youth counsels that 
you know, that's so uncalled for. You see, let your behavior be as of holiness. When people see you, they should be able to point at you and say, no, this person is holy. You know? And it says also, not false accusers, not giving to much wine, teachers of good things. Not false accusers. Have you met some women in your life? <laughs> you have met them. Mom. Have you met them in your life that you you just like they just say something? They say something. They don't even know the true story, and they begin, you know, to spread things. And we men, so women, so much exaggerate. If you don't know, the Bible says those who exaggerate that it's a sin. You can't even make the kingdom of heaven. You know, they exaggerate and they sell things. You know, they accuse you wrongly, especially in my time when we're growing up and you're in your teenage age. If they just see a guy walk beside you, oh my God. By the time you get home, your mom knows, your mom who wasn't even around you will call you. Mm, who are you doing with that guy? And you're like, which guy? Which guy? You know? Don't be a false accusers, okay? Don't be a false accusers. It will be teachers of good things, good things. And it says that they may teach the young women to be sober. Mm -hmm. What you don't have, you can give. That they may teach the young women to be sober. So every older woman as long as you are older as long as you are a woman in fact there is always a next generation after you there is someone that is out there looking up to you what are you teaching them now for you as a lady you complain you have problem in your home you complain you have problem with your boyfriends and blah 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 now if you go to Proverbs 31, Proverbs 31 talks about the virtuous woman. I'll still go there, but let me just end you a bit. Proverbs chapter 31 talks about the virtuous woman, and we all quote that scriptures. Now, if you read the preceding verse of the Proverbs 31, do you know what was happening there? <laughs> the king's mother was actually telling his son how he should conduct himself. How he should conduct himself, like you know, you, my son, don't go to an harlot, okay? And then he told him that who can find a virtuous woman that if you're going to be married, if you're gonna get someone to get married to, these are the virtues, these are the things you should look out for in such a woman. And then he began to list that that is where Proverbs 31, the virtuous woman came from. Not just the not the, not that the Bible just was just praising someone. No, it was a woman, the mother of a king, who was, who was actually talking to his son. So let's go back. The same conduct or the same virtues are what we find it. as a woman or as a lady one you must be sober you know be sober don't be doing everywhere you are there you are doing be sober minded be sober it says love they should love their husband do you love your husband at all? To you, loving your spouse is an eternal commitment unto Jesus Christ. Either the man does things you don't like, either the man doesn't look the same way you looked when you first met him. You must love him. So love their husband and to love their children so it's so disheartening to know that some women don't love their kids they don't love their kids they cannot go extra mile for their kids they will tell you if their father cannot do this then why should I bother myself even when they have the capacity to do that thing but because the man is just in is not you know maybe it's financially not okay enough and then you feel i mean your children your own children <laughs> like i can't imagine you know 
love they should love their children and also to be discreet oh my god this is one of the things that is killing some people some people are not just discreet you are married your mom is not living with you for yet your mom is controlling your home because she knows everything that is happening in your home You are not married. You have friends. But then, <laughs> your friends not too much and they use that to stab you behind. Be discreet. There are some things, there are some testimonies we don't need to share. You share them, you cut your life short. Be discreet. And then it says, they should be chaste. Oh my. Chaste. Be pure. Be modest. Be modest. You see some people the way they dress and you wonder, like, is this person married at home? And they tell you, I don't give a shit. I don't give a damn. After all, my husband didn't say anything. Maybe your husband has, maybe the husband is just like, ah, she's sabi, let her be. Be chaste. Let people see you and see good and godly virtues then keep us at home keep us at home bible says keep us at home keep us at home what does it mean to be a keeper at home okay you don't know okay what does a housekeeper do if you employ a housekeeper what does the housekeeper do you keep your house keep it clean Keep it welcoming. Keep it nice. Not that your husband should come home and the whole place is smelly and be like, what will be? Why is it smelly? Eh, is the baby who peed on here? My friends told me a story of uh, a friend. They are Christians. In fact, the husband is a pastor. Had to tell the wife that she's tired of her. Why? Says, since he got married to this woman, he has been the one washing. The woman we know wash. And then it got to the peak that one day the man came back. The, oh, the man traveled and um, before he traveled, the woman prepared noodles and I think about one week, <laughs> it sounds funny, but it's real. I think about after one week when the man came back, the same pot that this woman used to prepare the noodles, Indomie, if you don't know, noodles, the woman refused to wash the pot and just fill the pot up with water for one week and this man came back and was like, what is this place smelling? And then... He just got tired and like no i can't take this anymore i cannot do this anymore so we should be keeper of our home you keep your own make your home neat make your children look up appealing you yourself make yourself look appealing let it be welcoming to your husband let it be welcoming let it be only you know what i mean only hmm? and then went forward and say that you should also as a woman be good be good that when people see you they begin to recommend that yes you are good and then be obedient to their own husband be obedient to your husband you can go back and check that titles too and read through now you know i told you at the beginning i said there was something that the scripture said and that when i read it it caught my heart and this remember when we started when i started from the first verse of this chapter two bible says um apostle paul told um and titus that he should teach this to become sound doctrine it's to teach this to become sound doctrine and the reason why he said you should teach these things to become sound doctrine is because for the women with all these things when you're discreet you are chaste you are you are good you love your husband you love your children you keep your home you are obedient to your husband you are subject to your husband he says why listen so that <laughs> the word of god be not blasphemed So 
that the word of God be not blasphemed. So every time you fail in this, you fall short of this in your responsibility to take care of your home, in your responsibility to love your husband, to be subject to him. To be subject to him doesn't mean that the man should ride over you. It means to give your husband room to make decision, you know, to regard him, to rever him. There are some situations that we arise and then you can't just take, you can take the decision, but you don't just want to because you want to rever your husband. You want to put him in charge. You know, nothing makes a man feel nothing like how do I say this? Okay, nothing makes a man feel less than when their hair goes are being bruised. And the Bible says with all this, when you sh fall short of all those things, the word of God will be blasphemed. The word of God, you know, will look like it's a lie, it's fake. So I want to encourage you, if you are, you are there, you have been behaving unruly, you have been acting funny or any arm. I want you to go back to the book of Titus chapter 2 and read that place again. It will help you. Not for anything else. At least if it is for the sake of the gospel so that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Do you know what blasphemy means? Like it's a lie. It's something that is make up, made up. It's a lie. When people see you as a lady, let them see a reflection of God in you. Let them see a reflection. When they, when they face you on this side, let them see a reflection of Christ. When they sit the side of you, let them see a reflection of God. When I sit the side of you, let them see a reflection of God. I'm going to stop here today. And shortly, I'm going to upload another video because I'm going to continue in this series with the same title still. I hope you have been blessed and that um, you have gained one or two things. But seriously, sincerely speaking, let our life preach Christ. Let our life, you know, align with the things that the Word of God says. Let our life also be a reflection of the things we tell others. If the Bible says that as a woman, your attitude, your, your, uh, your chastity, your, your, your temperance, your, the way you behave can win your husband who does not refer the word of God, can win him over without argument. How much more people who are out there who are unbelievers. My name is still remain to call her or more of a fatal but and this is the purpose to woman channel. I will see you shortly on the concluding part of this video. Bye. Mm. Before you buy, don't forget to <laughs> don't forget to like, to share, to subscribe, and tell someone about this channel. I'll see you soon. Bye.